coming up on Torrance today. It's summer break and the city's libraries and the Torrance Unified School District provide resources to help keep kids entertained and well fed. The Torrance Area Chamber of Commerce recognizes our local businesses, individuals and nonprofits making a difference in our community. And get your catalytic converters etched. A free event hosted by the Torrance Police Department takes place tomorrow. All this and more coming up right now on Torrance Today. Welcome to Torrance Today. I'm Christine Lee. It's 4 p.m. on Monday, June 20th. I hope you had a great Father's Day weekend and happy Juneteenth. Thank you so much for joining us. Here is our first story. It's the second year that Juneteenth is being observed as a federal holiday. While officially the day is marked for June 19th, since it lands on a weekend this year, federal agencies are observing it today. And this year, it coincides with the annual Kingdom Day Parade in South Los Angeles, a multicultural extravaganza celebrating the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. This parade finally returned after being canceled for two years and delayed for five months this year due to the pandemic. The theme of this year's parade was Healing America. June 19th commemorates the day in 1865 when enslaved people in Texas were told by Union Army General Gordon Granger that they had been liberated. This came almost three years after President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation. While this day has been recognized annually since 1866 in various parts of the country and is considered to be the oldest nationally celebrated commemoration of the end of slavery in the U.S., it did not become a federal holiday until last year when President Joe Biden signed the Juneteenth National Independence Day Act into law. As a result, most banks were closed today, as well as the stock market and the U.S. Postal Service. And while federal offices and schools also observe the holiday, not every state has adopted Juneteenth as a state holiday, including Alaska, Arizona, Florida, Tennessee, and Wisconsin. Most retail stores and restaurants were open for regular business today. It's officially summer vacation for our Torrance kids, and here are a couple of ways the city and the Torrance Unified School District are helping to entertain and feed them. The Torrance Public Library is proud to present its annual All Ages Summer Reading Program. Readers who meet the challenge of reading for 16 hours or completing literacy-related activities for that amount of time can win a prize. Just go to any library location in the city to register and pick up a tracking sheet or find that form online. The city's website also has a comprehensive reading list for readers of all ages. And if you go to library.torrentca.gov programs, you'll see lots of free, fun and educational programs for our community, including craft kits to take home or in-person events to attend. For example, tomorrow there will be an anime class at the Southeast Library at 3.30 p.m. And those who are artistically gifted can compete in a bookmark design competition. All entries must be received by August 20th. And over at TUSD, free meals continue through the summer. The school district says, Good nutrition and learning go hand in hand, and anyone 18 and under can eat free meals. They do not have to be a TUSD student. Breakfast and lunch will be available Mondays through Fridays from 10.30 to 11.30 a.m. at select school locations throughout the city. For questions, call the Nutrition Services Department at 310-972-6350. The Torrance Area Chamber of Commerce recently celebrated local businesses and nonprofits making a difference in our community. After the pandemic happened in the last two years, small businesses suffered so much. About 45% of them closed their doors forever. And this shows that what Torrance Chamber is actually proposing that small businesses matter. We've grown a little bit over the years. You know, when we started, we were like six employees and 
1,200 square feet. Now we have two locations. I've been a member since the get-go, so I've been a member for 38 years with the Torrance Chamber. I'm happy for all 38 years. The installation and impact award ceremony took place last Thursday at the Double Tree by Hilton Hotel. Nearly a dozen categories recognized businesses, large and small, those who volunteered their services in a remarkable way, and other leaders and organizations excelling in what they do every day to keep our community strong and vibrant. More than 1.2 million ballots have been counted in L.A. County as of Friday, and one race in Torrance has a new leader yet again. Council District 5 has been the closest race so far. Council member Aurelio Matucci is now leading with just eight votes. On election night, his opponent, Gene Adelsman, came out on top. Then during the following week, the new count flipped the winners twice before Matucci reclaimed his current position. 80% of the ballots counted so far were either mailed in or dropped off at voting centers or drop boxes. And officials say despite the wait, the counting process is moving along on schedule with a final tally likely by July 1st. The next update should come tomorrow as more votes are counted between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. We'll be sure to update you if any of our local results change again, but it sure looks like every vote really counts in this election. Catalytic converter theft is an ongoing problem here in Torrance as well as across the nation. Last summer, the Torrance Police Department counted more than 300 incidents involving that crime that year. Police will host another free catalytic converter etching program tomorrow to mark the converters with vehicle identification numbers. While this doesn't prevent future crimes from happening, police say it helps them to tie multiple catalytic converter thefts to one suspect if caught, which adds additional counts and gives them the opportunity to leverage the criminal justice system at hand and provide the justice that victims are seeking. Officers also say being proactive in this way helps police departments to build meaningful relationships with the communities they serve. So come on out tomorrow from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the former Sears parking lot at Del Amo Fashion Center by Sepulveda and Hawthorne Boulevards. You must be a Torrance resident and be able to provide an ID and registration form with the matching address. Police also ask residents to stay vigilant and report a crime if they see it happening. A couple of days after the etching event is an exercise event inside the mall. The Del Amo Fashion Center brought back its partnership initiative with Providence Little Company of Mary Medical Center called Milestone Mall Walkers Club. Organizers say it's easier than ever to stay healthy and fit while looking great doing it. The community service program is designed to provide exercise in an environmentally controlled atmosphere. Those who join the Mall Walkers Club can access the mall as early as 7 a.m. daily to crush their step goals. Members can take part in the weekly group exercise on Thursdays at 8 a.m. at the main level food court, join quarterly health care seminars provided by Little Company of Mary, access a monthly calendar of events at the California Welcome Center, chart walking distances on an official mileage card, and meet new friends. For questions, you can call guest services at 310-542-8525. In June 2021, Torrance City Council approved a temporary housing program for people experiencing homelessness in Torrance for a pilot period of 12 months. The program is called 3290 Temporary Housing Village at Civic Center Drive, and the village is set to open next month. The program provides people experiencing homelessness with housing stability in the form of a tiny home, a 64 square foot living unit. The village will have 40 individual living units as well as shared restrooms and showers. People at the village will be provided with three meals a day. The goal of the program is to provide people with a secure space for a temporary period of time while they move towards permanent housing. Permanent housing can include options such as being reunified with family members or attaining subsidized housing. To support people moving towards permanent housing options, Harbor Interfaith Services, a longtime provider of services for people experiencing homelessness, will be the operator of the site. 
A professionally trained staff will develop a housing plan for each person at the village and provide the support necessary for each person to successfully move towards permanent housing. Support services may include anything from helping someone attain proper identification, such as a birth certificate or a California identification, to medical services and life skills training. Torrance's outreach team has been working actively to identify people experiencing homelessness right here in Torrance to be part of the program. The community is invited to learn more about the village. Three community engagement sessions are planned for Tuesday, June 28th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., Wednesday, June 29th from 1 p.m. to 7 p.m., and Thursday, June 30th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. During the community engagement sessions, the community can see the village site before it officially opens and Harbor Interfaith Services and city staff will be available to answer questions about the program. The community engagement event will take place at 3290 Civic Center Drive and parking will be readily available in the Cultural Arts Center parking lot. For questions, please contact the city manager's office at 310-618-5880. A couple of family-friendly events are coming up this weekend. They both take place on Saturday, June 25th, starting with a 5K run walk at 8 a.m. The Champions for Children race takes place at South High School, with all proceeds benefiting the South Bay Children's Health Center, which serves the dental and mental health needs of low-income or at-risk children, teens, and young adults. For more information on that event, go to sbchc.com slash C4C Run. Then in the evening, McMaster Park in North Torrance will host a family movie night under the stars. The Mitchells vs. The Machines will begin at dusk around 8 p.m. It's free and registration is not required. Organizers hope lots of people will come out, relax, and enjoy the free showing with their own popcorn. Well, it's hard to believe that 4th of July is just two short weeks away. And if you're a fan of the city's fireworks show, well, it'll be back with limited attendance, so plan ahead. The show begins at 9 p.m. on Monday, July 4th at the Torrance Civic Center. Spectators can come out to one of two locations, the west parking lot of the L.A. County Courthouse at 825 Maple Avenue is on a first-come, first-served basis, and so is the L.A. Galaxy Sports Complex at 555 Maple Avenue. It will be available for spectators as early as 7.30 p.m. and will close about 30 minutes after the fireworks are done. Tickets will not be issued for this year's fireworks show. For more information, go to torrentca.gov slash 4th of July. Over the weekend, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommended COVID-19 shots from both Moderna and Pfizer for children as young as six months old. The CDC's Advisory Committee of Independent Vaccine Experts voted unanimously to recommend the shots for infants through preschoolers after two days of public meetings. And CDC Director Dr. Rochelle Walensky accepted the committee's recommendation and gave the final green light on Saturday. Now, the LA County Public Health Department is gearing up to vaccinate as many of these babies and young kids as they can starting tomorrow, after the Juneteenth federal holiday. More than 900 vaccination sites across the county are scheduled to offer the vaccines to these youngest children, including more than 500 mobile sites, 200 pharmacies, and seven public health points of dispensing or pots. Because some of the pharmacy sites are only licensed to vaccinate children ages 3 and older, parents are asked to reach out ahead of time and verify hours and availability. For more information, visit vaccinatelacounty.com. Well, still ahead, how was your Father's Day? We'll be back with some highlights from our city and community in 60 seconds. There's just something special about this place. It feels like home, a living room under the sky and trees. The fresh air and the vast expanse of green, all here for us to enjoy 
and to care for. We have a responsibility to look after this earth we call home, to preserve it for generations to come. Every small action contributes to a bigger change, and every one of us can make a difference. The forest feels like home, a place where memories are made, and together we can preserve and protect it. At the end of every episode of Torrens Today, we want to leave you with a positive story from our community that fits the theme for the day. On this Motivational Monday, we want to lift up all of our fathers out there who hopefully got to feel appreciated yesterday for simply being them, a dad who cares. The Torrance Fire Department shared a touching image over the weekend on Facebook saying, some dads wear suits, other dads wear bunker gear and boots. Our police department shared pictures of many dads who are serving our community every day, saying Father's Day is a day to celebrate all fathers and father figures who love, support, and guide us. One of our loyal viewers, Ryan Sharoma, shared this picture, saying Father's Day was especially nice because his twin girls came home from college and catered to him all day, preparing brunch and dinner, a Chinese-style fried chicken with cilantro. He cherished the time they spent together playing games and hanging out late into the night. If you're subscribed to the city's e-newsletter, you may have seen this father from at South Bay All Day. She says they enjoy viewing the many hometown heroes' banners together near the Civic Center and search for his banner as well. How sweet. And finally, here's a picture with my father-in-law. I didn't grow up with a dad, but ever since I got married, my father-in-law treated me like a true daughter. And on this double date, we enjoyed Baekjeong Korean Barbecue located inside the Eastgate Plaza along Carson Street and Western Avenue. Father's Day motivates me now to turn my narrative from negative to positive, to be thankful to have a father figure that I can celebrate, and to remember to appreciate him every day. Well, that's our show for today. Let us know if you have a positive story to tell by emailing us at torrentstoday at torrentca.gov. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you back here tomorrow with more news from and for our Torrance community. Have a great day.